In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for the abundance of grace, mercy, and love you bestow upon us. Thank you, Lord, that as we have come to learn of the truths of your kingdom, you are revealing to us by the power of the Holy Spirit everything that we should know. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for as we learn the word of God, you are teaching us till the depths, going to the depths, knowing the word of God, just like how we dive into a deep sea. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, that as we learn the truths and keep it in our hearts and apply the truths, we know and we know that everything that the Lord says comes to pass and we witness all good things in our lives. We ask this in the most glorious and blessed name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Amen, and Amen. Thank you, amen. Jesus. Amen. Okay, yes. So let us... Let us start. Uh, start. So yesterday we were learning about hidden sins. How hidden sins can stop our stop or hinder the authority that the Lord has given us. It can come in in our way. So we need to we need to know that. Yes, so Sister Achama, you can please uh, continue. Again. So, uh, with the Holy Spirit help, I have to renew my mind in the weak areas. 25 by 7, we have to operate in love and with respect for all people of God. And to be free from every anger, gossip, all pretense, jealousy, slander, etc. Our inner man must be renewed daily, daily by the word of God and with the Holy Spirit's help. Amen. Amen. Yes. And, and this renewing is not a one-time process. It, it is does not, not like end okay. after a stage. Even at any stage, it doesn't end. It is a lifelong journey. That was I was amazed by that. Yes. Yes, it is a lifelong journey because a person who is very strong today, okay, a person will say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I've got the mind of Christ. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I will bash up the devil. The devil has no power over me. Uh, the kingdom is under my feet, you know, and that person will be in total faith today. Tomorrow, when that person faces some, some tribulation in a different area of his life, now that faith does not remain the same. It wavers. So that's why we need to have a check. We need to have a check on, on, our, on our thoughts, on our words, on our deeds, on our actions. Amen. So... Yesterday, uh, who, yesterday, who had been to Melbourne session from here? Anyone? I listened it in the morning. Okay. So yesterday, I had given a session on taming our mind to acknowledge the word of the Lord. Okay. So let us let us uh, let me ask questions. So sister Chama, let the others reply. Okay, let me see yes. how much they know. So what is the meaning of taming the mind? Please answer. Taming the mind. What is the meaning to tame a mind? 
Anything that you all know, it's okay. Just answer. Mister, is it to discipline our minds? Discipline our mind. Okay. Next. To change Someone? our thoughts according to God's wisdom. To change our thoughts according to God's wisdom. Okay. To change our thoughts. Anyone else? Anybody? What do you mean by taming? Teaching myself to focus on Jesus. Teaching. Yeah. Teaching yeah. myself to focus yeah. on yes. Jesus. You know? Uh, always I want to change my shift my focus from what uh, I see in the world and you know how I uh, deal with my carnal thinking I shift my focus and bring it to okay. Jesus every time I realize yeah okay now thank you thank you for your answers sister Jonita you have any answer because it's uh, unmuted yeah Renewing my mind daily with the word of God. Renewing my mind daily. Yes, daily is very important. Renewing my mind daily with the word of God. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your answers. You're welcome. Yeah. Now, when we say taming our mind, what, what is our mind? Okay. Is mind... Physical or spiritual? What is it? Does anyone know? Is physical. mind physical? Or physical. Spiritual? Okay. 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 Physical. Okay. Anyone else? Would anyone also like to try? Is it physical or spiritual? Anybody? No one? Everybody... Uh, Everybody knows that the mind is physical? It deals with the senses. Okay. Okay, fine. So, one minute. I'll see if I can share my screen. One minute. We will read one, one small passage, okay? In that, I want you all to know about, it, it talks about mind only. So let us see what it tells us. Okay, so it is. Okay, I'll read this. Okay, it this is this is a passage uh, from the Bible, which will help us to talk about the mind. Now this is Luke chapter sixteen verses twenty to thirty one. Now pay attention. Okay, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and see Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Now the rich man cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, <coughs> and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, 
for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence, means here and there. Okay? A person who is in heaven cannot go to hell. A person who is in hell cannot go to heaven. Cannot pass. Now 27. Verse number 27. Mm. Then he said, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Now, from here, what do what have anybody understood? Can anyone tell? I want somebody else also to answer. Please don't let only the people who answer every time answer. <clears throat> Sorry. Can someone say that what actually did this passage tell us? Please. Can we unmute? Yes, Sister Jonita. Uh, yes, it tells us about uh, the a story between the rich man and the poor man, and how the rich man was ha had everything, and he was enjoying his life on this earth, whereas this poor man had nothing, and uh, he was like even waiting to uh, you know sitting at the gate there begging. And that someone will put, give him some little, you know, even those crumbs, like the breadcrumbs that falls from the table, he was just waiting for that little thing to fall so that he could mm -hmm. eat because there was nothing that was given to him. And here this rich man was enjoying with wine and, you know, luxury, with great food on his table, a banquet every day, and not bothered about this poor man outside the gate. So in this we learn that, uh, you know, when we have all the wealth and riches of the, uh, so what happens is like he's, the rich man dies and, and so the poor man, both are dead and, you know, they, one goes to heaven, to Abraham's bosom, the other goes to help for what he has done in this world, you know, so we have, God is judging us according to the way we live, how we treat one another, so the good is always rewarded. Huh? Sorry. So he's, uh, so this is a lesson. And also it's, it's about the poor and the rich. It's uh, like, you know, forgiveness and uh, also uh, a lot of things in this. This is a very strong parable, which is given about the, uh, the rich and the poor, as well as forgiveness and repentance you know so okay. he, he, thank you sister. Uh, yeah thank you yeah yeah yes so so yes uh, i read the passage especially okay where we seen as sister said rightly that abraham himself has told uh, told the rich man <coughs> 
See in verse number 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now, see this but, so important, na? So everything what is gone in the past is gone. But now, he is comforted and you are tormented. Yes, exactly because of their deeds. Because, <clears throat> what is said over here? One more thing. Let us see, okay? And actually, the teaching is not this, but let us see this. Now, what did Abraham tell the rich men? See, what did he say? I have five brothers that they may, that he may testify unto them. Okay? He's saying, send Lazarus. He's saying, send Lazarus down to my brothers so that he may tell them what's happening up here so that they may repent. Right? So that they may repent. But Abraham says that they have Moses and the prophets. So let them hear them. See this? So they have Moses and the prophets. Means this, this era, during, I mean, this is surely during the time of Moses. Okay, that's why Abraham told the rich person who is tormented in hell that they have Moses. They have the prophets. So let them hear them and let them renew their minds. Let them be a new creation. Let them change their minds. Let them follow the word of the God. Let them obey the Lord. Let them act according to the word. And when they do that, they will also be in heaven. But if you are ignoring the prophets, if you are ignoring the word of God, if you are uh, just taking it for granted, now you are in hell. Fine? Now, my teaching is not this, okay? This was just a passage to make something more understand. Okay? Now, what is told over here? It is said that both of them died, right? Even that beggar died and even the rich man died. Right? Now, after dying, who can talk? After dying, who can talk? Mm -hmm. So that is what I want to highlight over you. Okay. That after dying, when they reached heaven and one reached in hell, they spoke. Okay? Even Abraham is not there, right? But he spoke. Now, what is this? How does the rich man know that he still got five brothers? How does the rich man recognize Abraham? How does the rich man see Lazarus? Now, what I want to highlight here, even, <clears throat> even after we die, even after we die, our soul has the mind which never dies. Our soul has the mind which never dies. So our mind is not physical. Our mind is spiritual. Whatever cannot be touched is not physical. What about your words? What about my words? When we speak words, can we see our words? Can we see, if I say church, can, is that word coming out of my mouth, C-H-U-R-C-H? If I say a building, is it coming in the form of letters? No. I cannot see my words. I only can hear my words. In the same way, when a doctor operates, a patient he, he can operate the brain. He cannot operate the mind. Mind is spiritual. Brain is physical. Okay? 
So now, when we die, our mind that is spiritual is attached to the soul. Our soul consists of a mind that never dies. So we need to be very careful, actually. Once we understand this truth, you know what is the meaning of it? You can actually, the, the mind that you have right now, you and I, the mind that we have right now is not going to die. And when our soul leaves the body and go, now we will be going into the kingdom that we followed. And that's why, and that's why we can actually imagine what is happening to us. For example, many people, okay, let me let me tell this also. Many people tell me, many, I've heard many, and even when I was I was uh, not in the word, I, I also taught the same, okay? They said that this life is short. Enjoy it to the fullest. Do whatever you want. You will not get it again. Okay? This is what was the carnal mind in the world telling us. And we believed that. And that's why you see many people go to extremes of doing anything in this world because they think that this is only one life. Let me enjoy it. Now, when a person is in the world, okay, when a person is in the world, now we have our five senses and that is the soul mind. The soul mind has the five senses, okay, like our seeing, our hearing, our tasting, our touching, it has senses. In the same way, when a person is dead, okay, when a person is dead, does that person also have the senses? Yes? No? Anyone? When a person is dead, does that person have senses? No. That person does not Understood. have the senses. Understood. Is the body still available? No. 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 Body. no. Can we still see the body when the person is dead? Yeah, we can see. Yes. 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 We can see the body, right? We can mm -hmm. see the body. We can touch the body. But yes. that person is unable, that person is unable to, to uh, feel our okay. touch. Why? Because the soul mind has left the body. So if my body is living, my body is actually zero and the soul that is inside it is everything. Are you getting it? Amen. And yeah. that soul, when it goes to God, means we are actually living the dabba over here and going. We are living the uh, empty box over here and going on earth. And now the soul that is actually in us, the spirit in us, the soul in us, now that goes to the right destination that it needs to go. And that's why beware. We may think that only the body has the pain. No, the body does not have the pain. If the body has the pain, then when people die, some of them are cremated. How come they don't get up and run? Because the body actually has no life without a soul. The soul has everything. Everything is in the soul. So, when we are not on this planet Earth and our soul is going up to heaven, now, see that it goes to heaven only. Let it not go in the torments of hell. And that is what, that is what Lazarus told over here. What did he say? He said, Send Abraham. last, sorry, uh, uh, that is what uh, the rich man told over here. Sorry, sorry for the this. Yeah, no. that is what the rich man told over here. He said, send Lazarus that he may dip his tip of finger in the water and cool my tongue for I am tormented 
by the flames can you can you see this that i am tormented in the flame means that soul we are thinking are it shall nothing will happen even if we go over there uh, you know i will not get i will not feel the burn i will not know the soul is everything and imagine when we go to a wrong place after get after our soul leaves the body it is not one day two day three day it's not for months it's eternity eternity so please as we are learning this pay attention so our mind <clears throat> our mind is never dead okay our mind is always alive and our mind is spiritual and because now pay attention to this and because our mind is spiritual the evil who is a spirit comes and plays with our mind the evil who is a spirit comes and plays with our mind he will come and show you everything that is wrong in your life he will come and tell you that somebody is against you why don't you give back he will come and put differences between you your colleagues your neighbors your spouse your parents and your children he will come and destroy you if you are not going to if you are not going to tame your mind according to the word of god. god and that is why we need to tame our mind mind because mind is a playground of the evil spirit mind is a playground he can play whatever he wants football volleyball cricket it is his playground he decides but it depends on you and me how much are we allowing him to play he is a shameless he will come and play with you every time but are you allowing him to play are you opening that gates for him are you giving him the key to open the lock of your mind it all depends on you and me it all depends on us we have the choice we are made in the likeness and image of our god we have got the authority and that's why we have got to tame our mind to be in the authority of our god if you want the authority to prevail in your life tame your mind according to the word of god if the lord has said heaven and earth will pass away but my word shall not pass the lord means it he means it but the thing is how much am i ready to believe it how much am i ready to believe it it depends on me and that is why this passage is very clear and that's why i took this passage it's very very clear that our mind is spiritual our mind can be played in the heart okay we have we have got two minds one is the spirit mind one is the soul mind spirit mind belongs to god soul mind belongs to the carnal thinking but i need to now my spirit mind will always speak about god my spirit mind it depends on me how much am i paying attention to my, to that voice that is coming from the spirit mind and that is why jesus said my sheep listen to my voice that's why jesus said that my sheep will listen to my voice because in our life we can always hear two voices one is the voice of the lord the holy spirit one is the voice of the evil spirit and now whoever you acknowledge 
you are the sheep of that shepherd so now we need to know who sheep are we the lord is saying they are my sheep they will recognize my voice but what if you don't fail to recognize the voice of your good shepherd then you are recognizing the voice of the bad shepherd so let us pay attention let us know what are what thoughts come in our minds we need to curb that thoughts and how can we curb that thoughts unless and until you know the word of god to counter attack that enemy the thoughts that he puts in you now there you will fail if you don't know the word of god or oh, either or oh, either you know but you are not ready to accept it for example okay somebody has done a very busy day a very busy busy schedule okay and that person comes home tired okay the person comes home tired and now the mind is saying today you don't attend that class you take rest you go to sleep you go to sleep early the mind is telling the person today you really worked hard and the mind will not speak like you the mind will speak like i the mind will say i really worked hard so today i should not attend the class i should not uh, go for the uh, bible study let me go and sleep this is what the mind will speak this is what the evil speaks and it the, it speaks like i am speaking to me now when you are rooted in the word of god now now what happens to you you will counter attack that thought and say yes i am tired but jesus you are my strength i can do all things to christ who strengthens me what did you just do you tamed your mind by saying shut up shut up and listen to the word of god get aligned to the word of god the moment you did that you have just defeated that evil who was trying to keep you far for one day from the bible class and you would miss to learn something about your authority how to use your authority and because you would lose now what happened the evil one would rejoice would enjoy because he defeated you even without your knowledge he he showed you that you are so tired you can't do anything see you cannot walk you cannot you just take bath you just eat your food and just go on the bed what happened you missed one important class and when you miss the important class you say okay i'll hear the recording tomorrow but that tomorrow will never come because next day we are busy again so we need to tame our mind just like you know we got an example of taming the mind we must have got lot of pets we must have seen pets especially dogs okay when people keep dogs in their house when the person says when the person tells the dog sit he sits when when the person tells the dog to the the, to the pet dog Uh, come here he'll come here he'll say give me a paw give me a paw he'll say eat he'll eat he'll say don't eat he can he even don't eat because i have seen many videos wherein dogs actually are tamed to even say a prayer before meals and then only they will eat so we can tame the mind of a dog we can tame we the humans can tame the mind of a dog then why is it so difficult to tame our own mind why can't we tame our mind to the word of god if there is a pet school then we are also in a school we are in the school of the holy spirit but am i ready to listen to that word 
Am I ready to listen to that voice which speaks to me? You know what is the difference between taming a pet and taming us? I'll tell you all. When we tame a pet, now when we tell the pet, come here, the pet comes. Give me your paw, give the paw. Go there, bring the ball, went, brought the ball. Now, utilize the same on humans. Now what happens? Come here, I'll come afterwards. Get up, I'll get up after five minutes. Now this is not known as taming. Taming means I have to get up now, I have to get up now. Over. There is nothing to be said after that. Come here, okay, my father has called me, my mother has called me, I come there. That moment, nothing more said. So that is known as taming the mind. If my God has said that I am authorized to pick up serpents, I am authorized to drink even deadly poison and nothing happens to me. I am authorized to lay my hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, when I see the sick, am I really laying my hands on the sick? Or am I wavering? Am I saying, my God, if I lay my hands, what if that demon comes in me first? Second, if I lay my hands, what if he does not get well? Now, your mind is going to teach you all this because that enemy, that devil, does not want you to do anything that the Lord has told you to do. It depends on you. How much are you going to believe in your God and say, you shut up enemy. I don't want to listen to you. And I know my God is faithful. My God will do all the things that he has told me. My job is just to believe. My labor is just to believe. And when I believe, and now I lay my hands and tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, take over. You told me in Mark 16, 17, and 18, that when I lay my hands, the sick shall recover. So Holy Spirit, I'm ready to believe. And here I lay my hands. And the remaining is your job. Over. Over. Just this much. We are not, we are not magicians. Keep it in mind. There is no power in my hand. The power comes from the Holy Spirit to me. The power comes from my Lord to me. I am zero without him. So understand that nothing happens because of you. Go with an open heart and go and heal the sick. Go with an open heart and go and say a prayer for someone. Go with an open heart. Say a prayer of agreement for someone. It is going to come to pass because you believe. So let us understand this. To tame our mind according to each and every word that the Lord has told us. It is he who has given us that authority. It is I who have to acknowledge what is the meaning of acknowledge? When somebody gets a, a letter, a, a letter of a appointment from the organization, now that somebody not, has not even entered the organization, but that letter has been acknowledged by him that I am ready to work here, I'm ready to work on this package, I'm ready to work at this timings, I am ready to sit over time when work is there, I am ready to come on holidays when work is there, I am ready for every meeting that I have been called, even if I have to work from home, I am ready. Now, when he reads that, and now when he acknowledges it, it means that he cannot say a no after that. And if he sees, says a no, his boss is going to show him the letter on his face and say, hello, can you read this? Can you see whose signature is below? You have agreed to the terms and conditions. 
And if you don't agree, and if you are not ready to work, according to us, you may please leave the job. Because that person has acknowledged, now he is doing according to what he has acknowledged. In the same way, we need to acknowledge the word of God. Unless and until I acknowledge it for myself, how can I give others? If I don't have it for me, how can I give others? If I myself don't have that blessing, if I myself don't have the confidence, if I myself don't have the faith, how can I give it to others? So let us understand this. Taming our mind according to the word of God is very, very important. We need to take possession. What is possession? What is possession? If we have got a house, right? When we go to the builder, what does the builder first show us when the building is under construction or either the building is not even come up? What does he first show us? He shows us the blueprint of that particular building that is going to come up or either it is half coming up. And now on that blueprint, he tells us, see, this is your living room. This is your bedroom. This is your kitchen. This is your dining. Now there is nothing, but he's saying this is yours. Whereas there are no walls, there is no building, there's nothing. But he's saying it is yours. And now what does he say? He says, okay, now I showed you this. Come on now, give me the first installment of my deal. And now, because he showed me something on a piece of paper, then I believe that piece of paper that one it is shown to me over here, no sooner it is shown, I, I believe that it is going to turn into a beautiful building and I will be staying here. Now I give him the installment. I don't only give him the installment. I give him repeated installments till I till the building is coming to an completion. What happens after that? Now once the building has come to a completion, now everything is done. Now you need to enter your house. The last installment is paid. Now, what does the builder do? He gives you possession of your house. Once you take the possession of your house, no one, nobody can come and remove you out of that house because you have got possession. You have got the authority in that house. In the same way, in the same way, we need to take possession in the word of God. Take possession. If you look at that scriptures, you need to tell yourself, this is not written for somebody else. It is written for me. And when you say it is written for me, when you believe it in your heart and you confess it in your mouth, there you won the race. And not only for one day, don't be overconfident only for one day. This has to be every day. Every day you have to check your thoughts. Every day the evil one will come to devour you. Every day he will come. Because he wants to snare you from that kingdom of the Lord. He does not want you to go into the kingdom of the Lord. He will bring various trials, various tribulations. He will bring people against you. He will bring circumstances against you. He will bring uh, your own spouse, uh, your own children, your own relations against you. Why he will bring? Why? Because now he wants you to go into that tension. He wants you to go into that turmoil. He wants you to open your mouth and support the kingdom of darkness. The moment you open your mouth, 
and said something wrong against your own people. Now you are gone into a turmoil, but he is the one to rejoice. Whereas if he is giving you all this circumstances, but you are standing on the word of God and saying, my God supplies all my needs. Greater is my God in me than the evil that is in the world, than the problems that is in the world, than these trials in the world, than these tribulations in the world. Now, when you acknowledge, when you take possession of that word of God, make it yours, adamantly stand on it, that time you see the difference in your life. But many of us, what do we do? The moment we tame our minds, uh, we, we don't tame our minds, we, we do everything that the evil one wants us to do. And once we speak according to the kingdom of darkness, please do not expect anything from the kingdom of light because you belong to the kingdom of darkness and you will get everything only what darkness gives you. If you want the kingdom of light, tame your mind according to the word of God and know your authority. Take possession of your authority. Acknowledge your authority and be there. Everything starts with a torch. Everything. So let us understand to take our authority by taming our mind. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. Thank you for this passage that we read, Lord. And we understand how important it is to tame our mind because our mind is spiritual and our mind is always going to be there connected to our soul. And we will also, even after we die on planet Earth, yet we will be knowing who we are in you, Lord. And we will be remembering all the wrongs that we had done in our lives, which put us far from you. And we don't want to go far from you anytime, Lord. And that's why we tame our minds according to your word, according to to what you have given us the promises and we bring our mind subject to your word, aligned to your word, in obedience to your word. Yes, Lord, we bring it in obedience and we apply everything that is taught to us into our lives so that we never ever go into the kingdom of darkness but remain with you as the father of light and we are the children of the light. We thank you, we praise you for this understanding, O Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for taking over and thank you for teaching us, revealing us all the important things that we needed to know from the kingdom of the Lord. We ask this in the most glorious and blessed name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.